In this video, I'll present our work entitled Plug and Play Methods Provably Converge with Properly Trained Denoisers. This work was accepted to the 2019 International Conference on Machine Learning. Consider recovering or denoising an image through the optimization problem of this form. Here, x is the optimization variable, and it represents the image to recover. The function f represents data fidelity. In other words, the function f encodes a posteriori knowledge that we would acquire by measuring the image. The function g measures noisiness of the image. In other words, the function g encodes a priori knowledge of the image. We might think that the image should be less noisy. We might think that the image should be less complex. Those uh, prior beliefs would be encoded in our function g. Finally, the scalar parameter gamma represents the relative importance between f and g. To solve this optimization problem, first-order methods such as ADMM are used quite often. In particular, the method ADMM applied to this problem will have this form. We can write the method in a more concise notation if we use the notation of proximal operators. Given a function h, the proximal operator with respect to h is defined through this minimization problem, where we minimize the function alpha times h with a quadratic penalty term that penalizes us for moving away from the center point z. This proximal operator is well defined if the function h is proper, closed, and convex. The method ADMM relies on these two proximal operators as subroutines. Let's interpret these two subroutines. The subroutine, the proximal operator with respect to g, is a denoiser, in the sense that if we provide a noisy image as the input to the proximal operator, we get as an output a less noisy image. The proximal operator with respect to f enforces consistency with measured data. In other words, if we provide as input an image that is less consistent with the measured data, as output the proximal operator will give us an image that is more consistent with the measured data. However, many state-of-the-art image denoisers do not originate from optimization problems. Non-local means, block mesh 3D, and convolutional neural networks are such examples. Nevertheless, these denoisers still have the interpretation that if you provide as input a noisy image, you get a less noisy image as the output. That's what a denoiser does. In this notation, we use sigma to represent a noise parameter. A small value of sigma represents a milder effort of denoising, and a large value of sigma denotes a more aggressive effort of denoising. A small value of sigma will not alter the image as much. A large value of sigma may change the image a lot in order to perform the aggressive denoising. Is it possible to integrate such denoisers with existing algorithms such as ADMM or proximal gradient? To address this question, Venkata Krishnan et al. proposed plug-and-play ADMM. Plug-and-play ADMM simply replaces the proximal operator with the denoiser H. Line number 2 and line number 3 are the same as what we had in regular ADMM. Only line number 1 is different, where we replace the proximal operator with respect to G with the denoiser H. Surprisingly and remarkably, this ad hoc method exhibited great empirical success and has spurred much follow-up work. By integrating modern denoising priors into ADMM or other proximal algorithms, plug-and-play combines the advantage of data-driven operators and classic optimization. For example, in image denoising, plug-and-play replaces total variation regularization with an explicit denoiser such as a BM3D or a deep learning-based denoiser. Plug-and-play is particularly suitable when end-to-end -end training is impossible due to insufficient data or insufficient time. Let me show you a few of the strong empirical results presented in prior works by other groups. Rand et al. considers the setup of Poisson denoising, where an image is corrupted by Poisson noise. While other existing methods can perform image recovery and get a decent image, plug-and-play ADMM with the modern denoiser block match 3D performs a much cleaner recovery. Srihari et al. considers the setup of image in painting. In this setup, Given this original image, we are only able to observe 5% of the pixels. The observed pixels are chosen randomly. While other existing methods can perform in painting and get a reasonable recovery, plug-and-play ADMM with the modern denoiser non-local means accomplishes a much cleaner recovery. Chan et al. considers the problem of super-resolution, where the method is provided with a low-resolution input, and the goal is to recover a higher-resolution image. 
There are many other existing methods for this problem, and they all do a reasonable job at constructing a high-resolution image. However, plug-and-play ADMM with the modern denoiser BM3D produces the cleanest output. Chan et al. also considers the problem of single photon imaging. For each pixel, we either measure our photon or we do not measure any photons. For each pixel, the measurement is binary. The probability of measuring a photon for a pixel is proportional to the true brightness of the pixel. There are other methods that can perform image recovery for this problem setup, and from afar they all seem to be working very well. When we zoom in, we can start to see the difference. We can see that plug-and-play ADMM with the modern denoiser BM3D produces the cleanest recovery compared to the other existing methods. The empirical success of plug-and-play naturally leads us to ask theoretical questions. When does plug-and-play converge, and what denoisers can we use, what denoisers can we plug in for plug-and-play? We summarize the contribution of this work as follows. First, we prove convergence of plug-and-play methods under a certain Lipschitz continuity condition. Then, we propose real spectral normalization, which is a technique for constraining deep learning-based denoisers in their training to enforce the proposed Lipschitz condition. The modern denoisers off the shelf, as is, may or may not satisfy the certain Lipschitz condition that ensures convergence. Real spectral normalization is a technique for us to enforce this condition and thereby ensure convergence of plug and play. Finally, we present experimental results that validate our theory. The code that we use for the experimental section is made available through GitHub. We now present the plug and play methods. Plug and play for backward splitting is an iteration of this form. We first perform a gradient update and then we apply the denoiser. Plug and play for backward splitting is a fixed point iteration. We say x star is a fixed point if it satisfies this fixed point condition. The fixed points of plug and play for backward splitting have a simple, albeit non rigorous, interpretation. The iteration applies the gradient update to make the image agree with measurements, and then apply the denoiser to make the image less noisy, in an alternating fashion. A fixed point represents a compromise between these two goals of making the image agree with measurements and making the image less noisy. Plug and play alternating directions method of multipliers, or plug and play ADMM, has this form as we have seen before. Plug and play ADMM is a fixed point iteration, and we say a primal dual pair, x star u star, is a fixed point if it satisfies this fixed point condition. Plug and play Douglas Rackford splitting is an iteration of this form. It is relatively straightforward to show that plug and play Douglas Rackford splitting can be expressed as a repeated application of the operator t, where t is defined in this way. Plug and play ADMM and plug and play Douglas Rackford splitting are equivalent. We analyze convergence of plug and play Douglas Rackford splitting and translate the result to convergence of plug and play ADMM. Plug and play DRS is a fixed point iteration, and we say Z star is a fixed point if it satisfies this fixed point condition. We now present our convergence results. Before we talk about what we do assume to establish convergence, let's talk about what we do not assume. If we assume the denoiser satisfies this non-expansiveness condition, then the standard tools of monotone operator theory tells us that plug-and-play ADMM converges. However, this assumption is unrealistic, as demonstrated by the work of Chan et al., so we do not make this assumption. Also, we do not assume the denoiser is continuously differentiable. This is the main assumption of our theoretical analysis. We assume the denoiser H sigma satisfies this Lipschitz continuity condition. Remember, sigma controls the strength of the denoising, so we can expect H sigma to be close to the identity mapping when sigma is small. Upon hearing this explanation, you may think that this assumption is reasonable, or you may not be fully convinced. In any case, we will show in the next section that this assumption is enforceable. Under this assumption, we show that plug-and-play forward backward splitting and plug-and-play Douglas backward splitting are contractive iterations, in the sense that if we express the iterations as a repeated application of the operator t, then the operator t satisfies this contractive inequality with delta strictly less than 1. If x star is a fixed point, then the classical Banach contraction principle tells us that the iterates converge geometrically to the fixed point. We now formally state our convergence results. We assume our denoiser satisfies the main assumption, 
and we assume F is strongly convex and L smooth. Then the mapping that defines plug and play forward backward splitting satisfies this contractive inequality. This contractive coefficient is less than 1 if alpha is within this interval. Next, we formally state the convergence of plug and play Douglas rack for splitting. Assume the denoiser satisfies the main assumption. We also assume F is strongly convex. Then the mapping that defines Douglas rack for splitting satisfies this contractive inequality, where this contractive factor is less than 1 if these inequalities are satisfied. Remember, plug and play Douglas rack for splitting and plug and play ADMM are equivalent. Therefore, a corollary of this previous convergence result is that plug and play ADMM also converges when plug and play Douglas rack for splitting converges. Plug and play forward backward splitting and plug and play ADMM are distinct methods. They perform different operations. However, they share the same set of fixed points. The equivalence of the fixed points of these two methods was proved by Meinhardt et al. and Sun et al. So plug and play forward backward splitting and plug and play ADMM are distinct methods for finding the same set of fixed points. Plug and play forward backward splitting is easier to implement as it requires the evaluation of the gradient of F rather than the evaluation of the proximal operator with respect to F. However, plug and play ADMM has better convergence properties as demonstrated by our two convergence results and our experiments. Let me summarize the key idea of the convergence proofs with one sentence each. To establish convergence of plug and play forward backward splitting, we view the iteration as a composition of an expansive operator, the denoiser, with a contractive operator, the gradient update. The convergence proof of plug and play Douglas rack for splitting is based on the notion of negatively averaged operators of Gieselson. Next, we present real spectral normalization, a technique for enforcing the main assumption A and thereby ensuring convergence of plug and play. We use the deep learning based denoiser DNCNN by Zhang et al. DNCNN learns the residual mapping with a 17 layer convolutional neural network. This figure illustrates the architecture of DNCNN. The neural network takes as input a noisy image and outputs the estimated noise of the image. The estimated noise is to later be subtracted out from the noisy image so that we can recover a clean image. The first layer is a convolutional layer composed with a rectified linear unit or ReLU nonlinearity. The following 15 layers are convolutional layers with batch normalization and ReLU nonlinearities. The final 17th layer is a convolutional layer. Given a noisy observation where X is the clean image and E is the noise, the residual mapping R estimates and outputs the noise. In other words, R applied to the noisy image is the noise, and Y minus RY, that is the clean recovery. Learning the residual mapping, as opposed to directly learning the clean recovery, is a common approach in deep learning based image restoration. We also use simple CNN, a simple convolutional encoder decoder model for denoising. This figure illustrates the architecture of simple CNN. There are four layers in total, and the first three layers are convolutional layers composed with ReLU nonlinearities. We do not use batch normalization. The last, the fourth layer, is a simple convolutional layer. Simple CNN is not as good as DNCNN. We use simple CNN to show that real spectral normalization is a technique applicable to any CNN denoiser, not just DNCNN. Note that I minus H is equal to the residual mapping. Here, H is the denoiser, R is the residual mapping, and I is the identity mapping. Therefore, enforcing the main assumption A is equivalent to constraining the Lipschitz constant of R. We propose a variant of spectral normalization to accomplish this. Miyato et al. proposed spectral normalization, a technique that controls the Lipschitz constant of the network's layers through controlling the spectral norm of the layer's weight. If we use one Lipschitz nonlinearities, such as ReLU, the Lipschitz constant of a layer is upper bounded by the spectral norm of its weight. The Lipschitz constant of the full network is bounded by the product of the spectral norm of all layers. The overall idea of spectral normalization suits our goal. However, the spectral normalization of Miyato et al. uses an inexact implementation that underestimates this true spectral norm and thereby fails to accurately constrain the Lipschitz constant of the neural network. In our work, we propose and use real spectral normalization. Real spectral normalization accurately constrains the network's Lipschitz constant through a power iteration 
with the convolutional linear operator and its conjugate transpose linear operator. The power iteration maintains u and v as estimates of the leading left and right singular vectors respectively. During the training of the neural network, during each forward pass of the neural network, real spectral normalization conducts these following two steps. First, apply one step of the power method with the linear operator k. Next, normalize the convolutional kernel with the estimated spectral norm. We can view real spectral normalization as an approximate projected gradient method enforcing the Lipschitz continuity constraint. This is approximate as the spectral norm is approximated through the power iteration. We train simple CNN and DNCNN in the setting of Gaussian denoising with 40 by 40 patches of the BSD500 dataset. The BSD500 dataset consists of natural images. Real spectral normalization constrains the Lipschitz constant of the residual mapping to be no more than 1. On an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, DNCNN without spectral normalization took about 4 hours to train. DNCNN with spectral normalization took a little more than 5 hours to train. The added cost of real spectral normalization, the added cost of performing the power iteration, is mild. Finally, we present experiments that validate our theory. In the setup of Poisson denoising, there is an unknown true image x true, and for each pixel, we observe independent Poisson random variables yi, where the mean of the Poisson random variable is equal to the intensity of the true image at that pixel. To measure data fidelity, we use the negative log likelihood function. If you are interested in further details of this experimental setup, see the main paper or the work of Rand et al. On the left, we have an example of an image corrupted by Poisson noise. The image on the right is the recovery produced by plug-and-play ADMM with DNCNN trained with real spectral normalization. For the Poisson denoising experiments, we verify whether the main assumption holds. We run the plug-and-play iterations and we calculate this quantity, which appears in the main assumption A, between the iterates and the limit, and then we plot the histogram. The maximum value, given by the red bars, lower bounds the epsilon of assumption A. Remember, convergence of plug-and-play ADMM requires epsilon to be less than 1. This result proves that BM3D violates this assumption. The other results show that real spectral normalization indeed controls, reduces, the Lipschitz constant. This table shows the peak signal-to-noise ratio of the plug-and-play methods coupled with BM3D, real SND and CNN, and real SN simple CNN. For both plug-and-play methods, plug-and-play ADMM and plug-and-play forward backward splitting, one of the two denoisers using real SN, for which we have theory, outperforms BM3D. In the next experiment, we consider single photon imaging with quanta image sensor. Under this model, we measure Z, which depends on the unknown random variable Y. The random variable y represents the number of photons hitting the sensor. This sensor is capable of detecting whether a photon has or has not hit the sensor. However, if more than one photon hit the sensor, the sensor is incapable of knowing how many photons have hit the sensor. Therefore, the measurement c represents whether there was one or more photons that hit the sensor. The mean of the random variable y, the photon count, is roughly speaking proportional to the intensity of the true image. X true represents the true image, and alpha represents a sensor gain. An integer value k represents an oversampling rate, and the matrix G duplicates each pixel to k pixels. The idea is that for each pixel, we have k sensors that can detect up to one photon. If you are interested in further details of this experimental setup, refer to the main paper or the work of Elgandy and Chan. On the left, we have an image that represents our measurement, a corrupted image, and on the right, we have a recovery produced by plug-and-play ADMM with DNCNN trained with real spectral normalization plugged in. For this setup, we use k equals 64. In other words, for each pixel, we use 64 single photon measurements. Therefore, the pixels in our corrupted image take integer values between 0 and 64. These two tables show the PSNR of our experiments. Overall, plug-and-play ADMM with DNCNN trained with real spectral normalization performs the best. We also observe that real spectral normalization makes plug-and-play converge more stably. Our final experiment is compressed sensing MRI. This is a medical imaging setup. Plug-and-play is particularly useful in medical imaging when we do not have enough data for end-to-end -end training. 
In medical imaging, real patient data is difficult to use due to privacy concerns. With plug and play, we can train the denoiser on natural images and plug this denoiser into the plug and play framework and use it for medical imaging problems. Given a complex valued true image, compressed sensing MRI measures the image in the Fourier domain with noise. We use the simple square loss to measure data fidelity. If you are interested in further details of this experimental setup, please refer to the main paper or the work of Exioglu. The image on the left represents the measurement, the radial sampling in case space. On the right, we have the recovered image produced by plug and play ADMM with DNCNN trained with real spectral normalization plugged in. This table shows the PSNR of our experiments. Generally speaking, the use of real spectral normalization improves the performance. The results of our experiments outperform these existing baselines. Finally, we conclude this talk. Plug and play forward backward splitting and plug and play ADMM converges under a Lipschitz assumption on the denoiser. Real spectral normalization enforces this Lipschitz condition in training deep learning based denoisers and thereby ensures convergence of these plug and play methods. And finally, the experiments validate the theory. Our published paper is available at this link or through this QR code, and the code that we use for the experiment is available at this link or through this QR code. Thank you.